It's Tuesday, everybody. Happy Halloween. And it's also the start of Maction. Yes, Conference USA's stranglehold on the weekday slate is over. However, Trig, I take no pleasure in reporting that the MAC collectively has not been much better. Seven of the 12 teams in my bottom 20 in the country, nine of the 12 in my bottom 30. But it just so happens it takes some special people to break down Maction. I happen to be one of the seven or eight most famous graduates. In (laughs) Mid-American Conference history, a shameful loss by Ohio over the weekend to rival Miami. And you see him right there next to me, here to help me break down these four Tuesday and Wednesday games. My good buddy, not a Mac grad, but certainly a very smart individual and an adopted son of the area, Adam Trigger. Trig, how the hell are you doing, man? I'm doing great, and I actually am a Mac grad. But the other Mac, of course, the MAAC. I went to Siena College, but I love this (laughs) conference. Listen. We're betting Mac sports all year. This is not, you know, these games just because they're in the middle of the week. Um, I've actually, I went through, Ryan. I've had my best, if I was to, to break out my record by conference for college football this year, games involving Mac teams is far and away my best um, of, of any of the conferences. So um, I'm hoping to lean into that. I have a 5%er that goes in the Tuesday games tonight. I'm going to talk about both of the Wednesday games. Um, But yeah, this is a conference that I bet all season long. I had a nice winner in the MAC over the weekend with Western Michigan. Uh, They blew Eastern Michigan out. Um, So yeah, no, I'm excited that MAC is on, you know, back in the middle of the week. It gives them some standalone. We get, we get to, you know, watch these games on that, you know, instead of having to find it on ESPN plus somewhere, we get to just turn (laughs) on the TV for them. So it's great. And and you and I go deep in MAC hoops as well. So no, I really like this conference. Glad we have some MAC football in the middle of the week. Absolutely. Let's get right into the Tuesday slate. I have a client play for Tuesday, and I'm going to give it to you right here. It is the under in Buffalo Toledo. Now, I gave this out at 51, which is a key number, betting college football totals. Number down to 50 as when we're recording, so the market seems to agree with me here. I think Buffalo is a live dog in this spot. Everybody knows Toledo came into the season as the consensus favorite to win the conference. They are still unbeaten, but it has not been a dominant run from the Rockets. Four of their victories this year by seven points or less, three of those against fellow MAC teams. Typically, those who follow the conference know this, Jason Candle, the head coach of Toledo, is typically good for one outright loss as a favorite every year. That has not happened so far. So Buffalo is live as a dog, but why I took the under rather than the points personally was... I look at these two offenses, okay, and first I'll talk about Toledo. I don't think they're going to have as much success in the passing game as per usual because Buffalo's got a very good secondary. That uh, They don't give up a lot of big plays. I think just seven passes. Yes, seven passes of 30-plus yards all season. So I think the Buffalo defense can absolutely do its job. And for them to stay within the number, I think they've got to keep the game low scoring. And where I worry about the Bulls is the lack of offensive explosiveness of their own. They only beat Akron 13 to 10. We'll have more on Akron here in a minute. Trigg will talk about them. So uh, They don't have a lot of explosive runs. Cole Snyder, his yards per play, uh, it way down, or yards per pass attempt, I should say, way down. So I like the under that is a client play. I gave that out earlier today at 51. The other Tuesday game I'm going to talk about is Northern Illinois, Central Michigan. Northern Illinois is Toledo's closest contender in the MAC West, just one loss in conference play. When I first looked at this matchup, I thought Central Michigan might be a live dog. The market disagrees with me on that. This number's come up to five and a half. Uh, I will say one last thing here uh, for all for if you want detailed breakdowns, more detailed breakdowns on all these Mac games, check out the gold sheet where you can have free access Wednesday through Saturday. Just go to goldsheet.com, use the username WT free and the password WT free. That's WT F R E E. You can get access to all the betting notes for college football games, including the uh, Wednesday Maction, but trig, I'm going to turn it over to you for Wednesday's two games. We've got Ball State and Bowling Green, and then perhaps the single worst college <laughs> football game of the year with Penn State and Akron, the bottom two teams in my power rankings. Man, I mean, you know, we're so spoiled with that rivalry in basketball that I guess, like, you know, it's 
they, they they are playing for the wagon wheel though, Brian. We'll point that out in a minute. But like let's just so I have less thoughts on Ball State Bowling Green. So let's go first there. I guess my main my biggest sort of kind of thought here is that Ball State might be a live dog. Bowling Green, you know, Brian, I still feel like they might be getting a little too much credit for the Georgia Tech win. Um, you go back to that game on the Georgia Tech side, they were kind of a mess. They fired the defensive coordinator after that game. It was it was just not a a good spot, not a good situation for Georgia Tech. So while I don't want to take anything away from like, that's a great win for Bowling Green and a great result. You know, I, I mean, I, I just think that that, you know, the next next week they go out and get shut out by Miami of Ohio, um, which is a good, a really good defensive team. I would argue uh, that Miami of Ohio is actually the best defensive team in this conference this year. I've been more impressed with their defense than Toledo so far, uh, but they didn't score a single point. So I, I find myself putting less stock into the Georgia Tech win, knowing that they couldn't even get on the board against, you know, Miami, you know, one, a team in their own conference um, that's not even perceived to be the best team in their own conference. They win over, you know, the wins over Buffalo and Akron are, are good. You know, obviously we'll get, we'll get, get in more into Akron in a minute. The Buffalo wins a nice win for them. Uh, I believe there are underdogs there. Uh, but, you know, I look at the Ball State side. They had a, a pretty big losing streak that they finally snapped last time out by beating Central Michigan. But they played Toledo very tough, 13-6 to final. They really hung, hung in there. Um, hopefully that, you know, illustrates, you know, how Toledo can potentially struggle offensively, which which helps your uh, under out tonight. Uh, and then they, they got a nice win last week over Central Michigan. So I'm kind of, you know, I just think they're a live underdog. I didn't think that I didn't think ball, uh, Bowling Green deserved to be laying the number they did in that game. It's been bet down a little bit, but, I you know, I, I it would be probably be Ball State or nothing for me there. I, I don't know that I want to come out and lay points with a Bowling Green side that I had rated toward the bottom uh, bottom of the MAC conference heading into the season. Now, we get to talk about the team that you and I both had rated dead last in the MAC conference heading into the season, and that's the Kent State Golden Flashes. However, Brian, both these teams are one and seven, and I'm, I'm seeing a lot of like comparisons being made. Neither team has defeated an FBS opponent this year. But I'm mm-hmm. here to make the argument that these two one and seven teams are, are they're they're not equal. Like there there's one in seven teams that aren't created equal, and I think we have two of them here. You know, one of the biggest disappointments of my life will be not cashing this Akron season win total over. That's one of the bets I made prior to the season. I thought I made a fantastic bet, Brian, and this team came out of the gate. And they they looked like they were going to smash the season win total over. They had a chance to beat Temple in the opener. They arguably should have beat Indiana as a huge underdog. Um, you know, one score losses to Temple, Indiana, Buffalo. I mean, and then of course DJ Irons goes down for the season, and it's like it's it feels unfair that this team is one and seven at this point, given how well they played in that Temple game, how well they played against Indiana. It, it just it really feels unfair that they're one and seven, but here they are. Jeff Underklupler is the quarterback now. He's a guy that played out where I'm from in Albany. FCS, you know, FCS school played, you know, had some success there. Listen, he's, you know, he's not, he's a huge step down from Irons, in my opinion, overall. But like they were playing him early in the season a little bit before Irons went down completely. He's not totally incapable. Like he there is, he's got a pretty big arm. He will throw it to the other team, you know, which is an issue. But like, He's not a bad quarterback. Like in 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 the context of the MAC, like he's not someone that that I think is just going to kill you against a lesser team. And Kent State is a lesser team. This is the worst team in the MAC. It was a total rebuild. You and I talked about this team prior to the season on shows, and just the just how much roster turnover there was, how bare the cupboard was for this team. So it's not surprising to me that Kent State is one and seven. It is surprising to me that Akron is one and seven. And even with the Irons injury, I think, Brian, you're going to start to see Akron get over the DJ Irons injury at some point where they figure out how to generate some offense with undercoupler. And, and then the, de- you know, the defense, there's some, there's some um, talent there. They started to play really good toward the end of the season last year. They hung in there against Kentucky. You know, they played great against Indiana. Like, 
they they should be better than they've been the last couple of weeks. And I, I really think that maybe some some time off, maybe these midweek games, getting a little bit more juice into their games are going to help, you know, the effort from Akron. And I do think we see this team rally at some point toward the end of the season. And you know what? Like, this might be their best chance to get win number two. They're not going to find an easier opponent in conference than Kent State. So I do like the Akron Zips here. I think they're favored. I think they're rightfully favored. I haven't decided if I'm going to lay it with them yet because, man, that's scary, I suppose. But I do think (laughs) Akron uh, gets the win in this game. Yeah, I'm just going to follow up with a few notes. You talked about the injury to Akron quarterback DJ Irons. What a just mortal blow that was to their season. Something that needs to be understood if you're new to betting on the MAC at this point this year, nine of the 12 teams in this conference have had to use multiple quarterbacks because of injuries and or ineptitude. So, I mean, there's a a lot of just shuffling at the most important position. You talked about Kent State. I want to just rattle off a few notes on that game and just how bare that cupboard was. So Dion, Coach (laughs) Prime, hired away Sean Lewis, Kent State's old head coach, to be his offensive coordinator. Kent had just four returning starters back for a first-time head coach, none of them on the offensive side of the ball. The Golden Flashes have scored a grand total of, get this trick, 62 points in seven games versus FBS competition with just five touchdowns. Their lone win was against Central Connecticut State, FCS team, you talked about that. Uh, All seven losses have been by at least 14 points, and the most points the Flashes have scored in any of those seven losses was 17. They've been held to six or less four different times. It's not just that they're losing. They're one and six ATS versus FBS teams. The lone cover was when they were getting a generous 38 at Arkansas in the second game of the year. Arkansas certainly did not care about that game. So, yes, if you thought UTEP Sam Houston last Wednesday was wild, (laughs) allow us to present to you Akron Kent State this Wednesday. Again, the bottom two teams in my power ratings. I agree, though, there is a gap in quality uh, between those two. So uh, that is the Tuesday and Wednesday MAC slate for you. Trig touched, uh, and I touched on all four games. I've got a client play under Toledo and Buffalo. I gave it out at 51 tonight. Again, I don't see a lot of explosiveness from either offense. But Trig, this ain't the first time we've been talking about the Mid American Conference in general the last couple of weeks. Elsewhere here on the Wager Talk YouTube channel, uh, you have been tackling 30 college basketball teams in 30 days. Excellent previews day in, day out. You've touched on several MAC teams, and I joined you on all those MAC previews. Why don't you tell the people uh, what you've got going on in that area? Uh, college Hoops tipping off next week. Yeah, so, uh, you know, people are probably wondering, okay, he's talking about Colgate, now he's talking about Buffalo, like, like, and then he's doing a UConn preview. And pretty simple, I just tried to preview – all of the teams I went and saw in person last year. And um, so that's the, the 30 previews in 30 days, what you're seeing uh, are all teams. I, for the most part, went and saw in person or brought, you know, brought a guest in that, that that's close to the team. Or I saw, you know, in, in, in Brian and I's case, we previewed Toledo. Uh, I got to see them play a couple times. We saw them play at a different Mac school uh, just to, to try to get you guys ready for the college basketball season with as much sort of real insight as possible you know, better than like, okay, these guys are, this is who left, this is who's back and and so on and so forth. Just trying to give that extra level of insight. And you can find those all on Twitter. We're going to post them uh, all to the YouTube, uh, Wager Talk YouTube. So keep an eye out for all of them there. It's going to, I really do think that that's going to be like invaluable info for you to use uh, going into the college basketball season. Um, But the MAC is a conference. I, I think the MAC got as much love as any conference in the previews because Brian and I got to a few Mac games last year. Um, I went to see Buffalo, uh, a little solo trip out there uh, to Alumni Arena in Buffalo for me. Saw them play Brian's alma mater in, in Ohio, and then Brian got to. Um, you know, Brian came with he, Brian went to the Mac tournament, uh, and then Brian came with me to Kent State. We did Akron. We talked about Toledo. Saw them a couple times. Uh, so really good insight there for Mac hoops. Brian, let's give them a little, just a little taste, I guess, of what they can see in the pre, you know, can, can expect in the previews, especially of the Mac schools, since this is kind of a, our Mac show here. I think Akron is the odds on just like they should roll through that conference this year with all their depth, all their, their sort of like, you know, upperclassmen, they don't lose a whole lot. And this is like, I guess the point I'll make before I kick it back to you, this is a conference that collectively loses a ton. 
almost every team loses their top player in in, in, in a sense, right? And and even after loses Xavier Castaneda, but they have a lot back. They're a very old, very senior laden team, and I'll be really surprised if they're uprooted as the regular season champ. The the I I'll throw out a quick sleeper like from the bottom of the league. I think Buffalo could be better than people think. There's some roster turnover there. They bring in uh, a Villanova assistant to be head coach. It's going to be a completely different team and deep, different pates from like the the Nate Oates to White Cell era where they were just flying up and down the floor. I think you're going to see like kind of a new brand of Buffalo basketball. Might be some growing pains, but I'm, I'm interested to see what that team can do. And I don't think they should be rated near the bottom of the conference like, like I'm seeing. Uh, but I'll throw it back to you. Just a couple quick thoughts on some Mac basketball. If you have any sleepers in the conference. Well, yeah, so I agree with you. 100% cosign. Akron is going to win this league. I would be shocked if they did not. Now, it's been kind of a three-horse race the last couple of years with Akron, Kent State, and Toledo. This year, I think there is a team that could finish ahead of Kent State and Toledo. And yes, this is a football, but it does have the Ohio University logo on it there. My alma mater. And I believe Ohio University, the Bobcats, uh, can finish second in that conference. I think they will be Akron's closest competitor. I don't do Homer stuff very often, as you know, Trig. I don't even like any of the Cleveland sports teams, really. But uh, <laughs> I think my alma mater can finish second in the MAC ahead of Toledo and Kent State, who, as you mentioned, both lose a ton heading into the 2023-2024 season. Yeah, I, I, I'll co-sign that. I think if you look at where these teams finished last year, the most likely one to, to sort of take a step forward and maybe even contend with Akron, depending on how the schedule falls for them, is Ohio. And I think the most likely ones to take a step back would be Toledo, who's had a ton of turnover, and Kent State, who's just going to play a much tougher league schedule this year and also had everything fall their way last year, which Brian so eloquently points out in the preview that we did of Kent State basketball, which you can still find out there. Uh, on the Wager Talk YouTube channel and on Twitter. Uh, so if you want in-depth on Kent State, uh, it's out there. Check Brian's Twitter page. I think he's he's got the more recent retweet of it. Yes. And a uh, lot going on this week. Today, it's Halloween. I will unfortunately be trick-or-treating at some point this evening. I'm kidding. I love my family. <laughs> uh, and then it is the start of Maction, as we've already covered. And as you see on the screen... It is also $2 Tuesday, customer appreciation. Look at that guy in the middle of the graphic there, Trey. <laughs> Your boy looking sharp in the blue suit. I found that. By the way, I thought I'd lost that tie. I found it like three days ago. I was very happy about that. But what I'm really happy about is this $2 NFL best bet. I've got four today only, guys. If you go to my page, wt.buzz backslash bp, you can get my 4% NFL best bet for just two count them two dollars last time i did a two dollar play in the nfl worked out pretty well the buffalo bills uh smoked the miami dolphins 48 to 20 that was when the dolphins were coming off a 70 point game the week before i enter week nine on a six and two nfl run overall trig if you can believe this i went eight no with teasers in the month of october so look for me to start Monday. teasing things all the time uh it uh i don't know and, and i was breaking rules too i was not following the wong teaser rules necessarily all the time i was teasing teams that were at three up to nine i was teasing four to ten and it was working i would not have covered those games had i not done that so uh breaking the rules cash and tickets that's good head on over to my page though get that two dollar play today only price is going to jump back up to 25 dollars at midnight, so uh, wt.buzz backslash bp is the place to go. And Trig, I will throw it to you to take us home here because, yes, we've already talked college football, college basketball. Why not throw a little Major League Baseball in as well on the Hustle Show pod here on a Tuesday? Game four of the World Series, Texas Rangers now lead two games to one over the Arizona Diamondbacks. Does this series get evened up tonight? I sure hope so, Brian. Um, I'm going to give out a 4% for free on the show. I am on the Diamondbacks. Minus 105. Listen, I went in detail on this on first pitch yesterday, and, and this is pretty much a follow-through from Game 3. I was hoping to get in and get, get out with the Diamondbacks winning Game 3. That didn't work out for me. Um, but I'm, I'm playing against the Rangers for a lot of the same reasons. I was willing to play against the Rangers yesterday. Man, Brian, if I, you know, who knows if that ball four gets called, maybe I do break through against the Rangers bullpen in that game. 
It doesn't. It wasn't to be. But I still think the Rangers bullpen is going to give one up in this series at some point. This was a, a bottom 10 bullpen during the regular season. They showed cracks against the Astros. They gave, they gave up a game in that series. Man, you know, like I said, if they get that leadoff runner on last night, who knows? Arizona could have very well tied the game. Uh, but just an off-hitting night for Arizona. I, I really thought when I got my crack at John Gray that, you know, the Diamondbacks were going to generate some offense, but they didn't. Uh, and, and I'll, you know, it, it just wasn't to be. But because of that, we still have the value in game four. You're only having to lay minus 105. The Rangers are 9-0 and on the road in the playoffs. It's something I'm willing to fade. I think it's keeping that money line value down on the home team here because everyone's sort of buying into this Rangers can't lose on the road theory. And and what I say is, Brian, that's a small sample size. It's worked out for them. If you're in the World Series, you're playing good ball. Like that's, you know, you're not getting mm-hmm. to the World Series without winning some games. Uh, so I'm going to go with the Arizona Diamondbacks, just like I did yesterday. I laid the minus 105 and I expect to get my units back. So hopefully the snakes even it up. And that is a 4% client play for me. I have a 5%er in one of the MAC games tonight. And go, listen, guys, simple math. A 4% play costs like 25 bucks normally. All these guys have them up for $2. You can buy 12 of them for the cost of, of normally one. So go nuts with a $2 Tuesday, Tuesday special. You've probably got a weekend worth of plays right there you know, for the cost of one. I think you can use it as many times as you want. So go, go take yep, advantage. Absolutely. Absolutely. Handicapper site-wide, it applies to all of us. Uh, you talked about that bad, uh, what, what looked to be a questionable call by the umpire last night. Our good buddy Mark Zinno called me last night. Absolutely apoplectic at the umpire because <laughs> he had the Diamondbacks in the first five. He was irate. Uh, and by the way, speaking of Mark Zinno, he and I did the hustle pod, do the hustle pod every Monday. We talk about props on the Monday Night Football game. Cashed another one last night, uh, although... You only cashed it if you bet it early with Josh Jacobs under his rushing total because uh, that uh, I had some nice closing line value there that closed at 58 and a half. I gave it out at 63 and a half. Of course, he finished at 61 right in the middle. But people can check that show in the archives. I believe it will be Trig and Zeno on the Hustle Short tomorrow, Wednesday, uh, maybe talking some NFL survivor amongst other things. And of course, the main show proper is Thursday. You can listen live, and that is always a hoot. Trig, that is all I have here on a Tuesday. My goodness, we covered three different sports, four college football games, college basketball, the World Series, $2 promo. Don't forget to check out the Gold Sheet as well, part of Customer Appreciation Week once again. To get that free access Wednesday through Sunday, it's username and password, WTFree. That's W-T-F-R-E-E. He is Adam Trigger. He's Adam Trigger, I mean. I'm Brian Power. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to get that down. In, in a year, I'll get that down, the, the, that it's reverse from where I'm at. But uh, I'm Brian Power. He's Adam Trigger. We'll talk to you all next time.